Up next on this edition of Influence Living, you're going to meet Joshua. Joshua's life was spinning out of control and then someone influenced his life and changed everything. You're also going to meet Jose from Puerto Rico. He was all into sports and baseball and things seemed to be going well until something traumatic happened in his life. And then you're going to meet Nira. Her family situation was just rather bland there in Guyana where she was raised. And then her life came alive. Something happened. You're going to hear about that and much more right here on Influence Living. Welcome to this edition of Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade. Here on Influence Living, we talk to people really from all over the world and we ask them, what has influenced you or who has influenced you during bad times in your life? Now, the truth is there's a lot of bad times for a lot of people in the world today. And if you find yourself going through difficulty right now, you need to hear what our three guests on today's program are going to say. Joshua is our first guest. He's from here in the United States. His life was spinning out of control because of pornography and other things associated with that. And then someone influenced his life. Here's his story. Hi, my name is Joshua. I am an evangelist. I work with Kingdom Encounters International. But before all that, I was a kid who grew up in a Baptist church that my understanding of church was so you wear a clip-on tie, you sing some songs, and you get some animal crackers. It was, a, it was a great life. Then my parents started taking us to this new church that had popped up in town out of an old bank. The guy was banging on a tambourine and dancing and singing. It was the mid-90s. It was crazy. And I, I was like, well, this is fun, too. And I remember singing the song there, and I heard the voice of God talk to me in that moment. And he said, I like it when you sing that song to me, Joshua. I was shocked. I was like, well, who's saying, who's talking to me? Who is this? And he said, it's me. And, and all those words you're saying about me are true. And I really like it when you say it to me. And that impacted me so greatly because I was like, well, who, who am I that you are mindful of me? My, my 10 year old mind was blown. I was so shocked. And then later that service, the pastor, I was speaking about something like the Holy Spirit and and if you want more of God, you got to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I was like, well, I want more of God. So I was the first one up at the altar at the end and they were praying for me and they said, that boy's not leaving here till he, till he speaks in tongues. And so I said, Akuna Matata, because uh, I was hungry and I wanted to leave. And so I spoke Disney to get out of there. Time out. Let me get this straight. I talked to my mom later. I felt so guilt ridden and I talked to her and she, she said, Josh, it's okay. And she goes, you don't need to be at an altar in a church service for God to encounter you. She goes, go talk to him in your room. And, and that's where I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's where I met the Holy Spirit in a powerful way. Now, then, then we ended up moving a few years later, uh, when I right at, at my, my formative teenage years into Nebraska and um, and I started becoming really bitter and angry and frustrated because I lost all my friends, I lost my community. And, and I discovered something at the wise age of 13 and 14 years old, that people are stupid. And this spirit of depression started really setting in with me. Fast forward me into, uh, into the rest of junior high and into high school. I met this crazy guy, I ended up sharing a locker with him. His, his dad was one of the new pastors at this big church I was a part of, and he was crazy fearless wild and obnoxious and I I just couldn't stand him at times but one thing I really admired about him was that he was bold about his faith because see I felt like I was the only Christian stepping into high school because all my Christian friends at church were good to be Christians on Wednesday nights and and Sunday mornings but they didn't want anything to do with God when we were at school Caleb was bold about his faith he would sing worship songs walking through the hallways of our high school. Before I knew it, pretty soon, by the time we ended high school, we had uh, we were leading four Christian groups a week inside our high school. 
Fast forward, I go to college. My, my roommate's addicted to pornography. And even though I denounced it in front of him, I, I, I soon became addicted to pornography. I hid it. I, I, I was ashamed of it. I dated my, my wife in, in college, got, got married, and was still hiding it. Still hiding it. Even though I loved Jesus, I was leading, I was leading worship in a, at a ministry. I was doing all the Christian things, but I was hiding that sin. And it was, it was eating me away. I just tearing me apart. Depression that I, I had when I was a kid started to come back. It, it was a battle. For months I would, I would be good and then I'd stumble again. And then, then I, I'd get myself back up and I'd clean and then months and then I'd stumble again and then months. And I can say now it's been a long, long, long time. Praise God. And, and, I, and, and there's freedom in Him, in Christ. And, um, and, and, but I, I had to do things that were uncomfortable to me that were in the Bible about being accountable to each other, confessing your sins to one another and, and letting other people into my life where I wanted to hide things. And when you bring it into the light and you allow, allow people into your mess, there's accountability there. There's freedom there. Then my friend Caleb called me again and he was living in Florida and, um, he said, Hey man, I'm, I'm going to start a ministry. I need a photographer. And uh, just like my 10 year old self, when I saw God, and I was like, God's real, that moment of revelation. It was like that when I went to Nicaragua with him in 2017. He prayed for the sick and they started getting healed in front of my eyes. Not only that, he just announced in the middle of a service that uh, he said, hey, everybody, you're going to see miracles. And they're like, yeah. He's like, yeah, everybody, you're going to get healed. They're like, woo. And he goes, yeah, my friend Josh is going to pray for you and you're all going to get healed. And I was like, huh? I wasn't ready. And But God moved. God moved. And it was incredible. When God enters your life and you say yes to following him, he, he'll take you on adventures. He'll take you to places you never thought you would go whether you think your life was destroyed in a divorce there's there's freedom whether you're trapped like i was in pornography there is freedom it's not about being perfect it's about coming to him and just saying here i am lord cleanse me again watch i fell down please pick me up and, and i want to follow you and he he's just looking for people that are willing like isaiah who said here i am lord send me and that that's been my story that's been my journey and it's um it's my absolute pleasure to serve the one that loves me so much we have war we have catastrophes things going on in the world uh, that are just unimaginable all that uh, was told of years ago in ancient manuscripts it's time to make a decision it's your decision time.com. Joshua's story is certainly interesting, isn't it? What I noticed about his story is something that you may need to hear. And that is this, that he was able to overcome those things with God's help, those things that he was struggling with, but then also with accountability from others. Uh, the Bible talks about that, that we should be uh, willing to share our faults with one another when we need to and, and to hold each other accountable. And God ultimately holds us accountable as well. Joshua found that he needed that in his life. And, and maybe that's the missing link for you. Maybe you're trying to do what's right, uh, but you find that you just keep getting into trouble again. Would you consider finding an accountability partner like Joshua did? Somebody that can hold you accountable. God will also hold you accountable. Give him permission to do so. But if you've never made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, then the Bible tells us this, that you have no hope of eternity with God. The only way to have eternity with God when you die is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Joshua would have prayed a simple prayer like this, and I invite you to pray a very simple prayer like this right now. Make a decision in your heart to do what Joshua did and say, Jesus, forgive me my sins. I know you're God. Come into my life. 
Would you pray that prayer with me right now, wherever you're watching from, whether you're watching there in Europe or here in the United States, wherever, whether you're on the phone or watching on television, would you pray a very simple prayer? You know, you've got to mean it. It's not just from your lips. It's a decision in your heart. Say this with me. Say, Jesus, I believe you're God. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my life. I make you my Lord and my Savior today. Thank you in Jesus' name. You've made a decision now to follow Jesus Christ. Now, it's just more than one little prayer. It's now a life journey. You've given your heart to Jesus and he will begin to change your life like he did in Joshua's so that you can do the kind of great things that Joshua is now doing. And it all begins with that relationship with Jesus Christ. And if you just prayed that prayer, we would love to know about it here at Influence Living. Would you please give me an email and let me know. Wait at InfluenceLiving.com. Go on to Facebook and message us there if you would like to. If you'd like to see other editions of Influence Living, go on YouTube or on Facebook and search for our sites there as well. Just search Influence Living and you'll find our page and our site there on YouTube. You can also write us on on, uh, typical mail as well, in typical mail form if you'd like to as well. You see our address right there in Orlando. Uh, One more thing too, if uh, you're looking for some reading material, here's something that will challenge you. Dumpsters. Some men live their life in the dump because they can't deal with the sin in their lives. They're still trapped in sin. And that's why I wrote 39 Stripes. It's a book designed to help men deal with the 39 main sins in our lives. All men throughout their lives at some point deal with all 39 sins. And here's the truth. Jesus died for each one of those sins. The problem is, is we don't get rid of the sin. We don't allow him to take the sin away. We stay in it and we stay in the dumpster. You're meant to be out of the dumpster. Jesus did not die so that you could live in the dumpster, 39 stripes, 39 day devotional that will change your life. Buy one today. Well, up next here on Influence Living, we're going to talk to a fellow by the name of Jose. Jose's life revolved around sports until God influenced his life. Here's his story. My upbringing was a I come from a baseball family, so my parents loved my parent, my father loved to play baseball, and I, that's what I wanted to be as a child. And it's interesting how one thing leads to another, uh, because uh, when I was a 12-year-old little leaguer, I uh, I wanted to talk to God, and when the ways that I would talk to God, even though I, I was an unbeliever, is that uh, I would uh, in my bed stretch out my arms. And when I was stretching out my arms, it felt like I was touching him or he was touching me or whatnot. And one particular night, uh, I was going to play the, uh, the next day against uh, the team that was in first place. And I wanted to pitch a, no, a, a perfect game. And uh, I said, God, let me get an opportunity to throw a perfect game against this, this team that's just full of good players. And, uh, and then I just kept talking to him and I said, you know what? And God, uh, I also want uh, to get married. I was 12 years old. I also want to get married when I'm 27. I want to have my first son when I'm 30. And I want to retire when I'm 36. Out of the blue, I was 12 years old. And, uh, and, and the next day when I pitched, I pitched a no-hitter. That's why I got 17 out of 21. The thing is, the thing is that, that things don't come as you as you plan. But in the future, it did because I got married at 27. I had my first son when I was 30, and I retired when I was 36. So everything was just like God told me to, right? So, so in that case, I I started believing God. Okay, even though even though I was a, a Catholic, at the, I still like reading the Bible. But uh, it, it didn't make sense to me sometimes because one thing is what the priest would say and another thing what the Bible would say. But, uh, but I, I tried to think that uh, maybe it's because of my lack of understanding. Uh, 
things didn't come out as I wanted to in the sense that I didn't become a, a famous baseball player like I wanted to, but uh, I went into the Navy. And years on, a couple of day, a couple of years afterwards, uh, in the Navy, uh, uh, God began to speak to me, and um, He spoke to me a couple of times, and He came in dreams and whatnot. But I never converted. I didn't convert because uh, hard-headed, and uh, I believe I was too young. It's not a thing you do when you're 20 years old. It's, it's like okay, that's like old folks, right? That's that's the idea that I, that most people have, and. When I, once I got out of the Navy, uh, I uh, went back to college, okay, and one day, out of the blue, out of the blue, uh, I went over to visit my uncle. And, and uh, it, it's funny, somebody asked me a, couple, a little while ago, uh, how did I find God? And I told him that I didn't find God. God found me because I was the one who was lost, not him. Okay, so uh, that particular day, I went to my uncle's house and I sat in a blocking outside and they had a, uh, an evangelistic campaign outside at the basketball court. I didn't go for the campaign. They didn't know there was any evangelist in the area there. Had no reason to listen to it, but God was looking for me. And I wasn't really paying attention to anything that he was being said because I was talking to my uncle. And we were talking, talking, and they were at the, uh, praising the Lord and whatnot, and I, and I wasn't paying attention. At the end of the service, there were like three or four people coming around and asking people if they wanted to, to uh, give their hearts to God. And uh, when they came, one person came to me and they told me, they, do you want to uh, uh, give your, your life to God? And I said, no, not now. And they said, uh, uh, no, no, but uh, you should. And I said, why? Is it because the God they will transform your life? And I said, well, and I said no. But the person kept insisting, insisting, and insisting. So I decided, I said, okay, let me go forward this way. He goes, stop insisting. They'll pray for me, put their hands on me, and I'll be done with that, and I'll be gone, and they won't bother me anymore. So I go forward, and it's raining like cats and dogs. And uh, this lady has put her hand on me, and she prays for me. And when she prays for me, she finishes, and I tell her, very arrogantly, very arrogant, I said, are you done? That's it? I can leave? And she said, yes, you can. But the preacher was on top of the stage that he goes, wait a minute, I'm going to pray for you. And I turned around, he, he pulled his hand out. He was like maybe 10 feet from where I was. And when he, when he put his hand, extended his hand out, I fell to my knees. I was not expecting that at all. I fell to my knees, I started crying, mucus came out, the whole nine yards. I could not stop crying, okay? And, and it was, I was crying so much, I cried like for about maybe 45 minutes crying. I just couldn't get up off the floor. I, I it was, it, it felt like uh, I had chains tied to me and that was just liberated at that moment in time. And, and, and at that moment, that's when I was saved. I was finally saved, I was saved at that time. I wasn't expecting it, it didn't, God found me. So, you know, that's, uh, that's one of my backgrounds. It's, it's basically as far as, uh, as God's seeking me. We have war, we have catastrophes, things going on in the world uh, that are just unimaginable. All that uh, was told of years ago in ancient manuscripts. It's time to make a decision. It's yourdecisiontime.com. Have you ever wondered about all the angelic activity in the book of Revelation? In my book called Angels in Revelation, I look into detail God's plan to activate approximately 40 different angels in the upcoming tribulation period. God did not use prophets or disciples or even priests to reveal the future end time events but he used angels. Angels in Revelation endeavors to highlight the angels' role, their calling, and their purpose to implement God's plan for the end of the age. I trust you will enjoy reading Angels in Revelation and find the information very useful. Mm -hmm. 
I trust that you enjoyed Jose's story and how that he changed so much uh, from his love of baseball to his love of God. Of course, he still loves baseball for sure. Up next here on Influence Living, you're going to meet Nira. Nira is from Guyana. She was raised in a very traditional Indian home, but she found that she was missing something until she allowed Jesus to influence her life. Here's her amazing story. My name is Nira Ramazra, and I born and raised in Guyana, South America. I come to the United States 1984 in New York, and I live in Florida for 30 years now. My life before I met Jesus, I had an emptiness in me. I was um, Hindu. I born into a traditional Hindu home. My mom, my dad, my sisters, my brother, my grandparents, the entire family. We were all Hindu, very strong Hindu. Church people, they love Hindu temple. I used to go to church, but I will come home and not feeling right. In my heart, deep down, I know I wanted to make a change. And I decided to make that change in um, 2003. Well, I met Jesus because of my supervisor. She um, was working there and she's telling Bible story and chill. While she's working, she's singing beautiful song and I fall in love with it. She invited me to the church and I went and I fall in love with everything I see. The room full of love. And we talked to the pastor and he made the arrangement and we baptized and the happiest I ever felt. That was the happiest days in my life, my children's life and my husband's life. And I I felt in my heart we had more peace at home. I had more peace within myself and I felt complete. But then something happened. Three months now after I go into church, my husband went to work one day and he wasn't feeling well. And um, he went to the doctor, they treat him and he went home. And for some reason he paralyzed. Um, from his face down, all the way down, he paralyzed completely, he could not speak. And um, I continued to go to church, I continued to pray, I continued to call on the church people, you know, to come and pray for him. And there was a lot of support. Even though I was brand new to the church, the Christian people show me love I never experienced in my entire life. And I was in my 40s at that time. But my, at that time, I had two daughters, and my husband was um, getting worse and worse in his condition. And I says, everything in life happened for a reason. And I hold on, on to Christ, and I hold on. But eventually, my husband lost his battle. I still did not give up. I said, there is nothing but the blood of Jesus, and the only living God is Jesus Christ. Even though I lost my husband, I was happy. I have Christ, I have Christ. And on my job, I work in a hospital. They asked me in the job, how, wow, how come you're laughing so much? You're always so happy. How come you never complain? And I says, I found the Jesus. They are not understanding, but I am telling them that this is what I believe. That when you work, and you get pay your paycheck and you think about all the bills you have just think about it jesus had they had five fish and they had plenty of people to feed and how like this miracle work and everybody get fed you think about that and think that this little money you work for god is going to bless it and you are going to pay all your bills and everything just believe if you believe you'll receive I am a living proof of many things and um, I wish what I am feeling and what I am experiencing other people, you know, who are not Christian or who are thinking about it and who are scared what their family will think, what their friends will think, what the community will think, that um, when the day comes you don't have to answer to them, you have to answer to God. and. Um, Go ahead and accept Christ and have, he'll be on your side and nobody can come and, you know, 
start to hurt your you would be touching a button and um, that's my encouragement for you know the people out there Nira's story is certainly interesting, isn't it? And perhaps you can relate. Maybe you have been raised in a home where Jesus Christ was really just a swear word and nothing else. And maybe you never had a real relationship with Jesus. And as a result, you don't have a relationship with God is what the scripture tells us. Jesus is the one that says it. He says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody can come to the Father except through him, except through Jesus. Jesus wants you to know that he loves you and He cares about you. And that emptiness that you feel in your heart, He would like to fill with His presence and His love in your heart. And here's how you do it. You just simply begin with a, with a prayer. Making a decision is what it is. A decision to receive Jesus Christ into your life. It's not about giving money. It's not even about being baptized in a church. It's good to go to church. It's good to give money to the poor and all those things, but those things don't save you. A relationship with Jesus does. And here's how you begin that relationship. Nira would have prayed something like this. She would have said something like this. Say it with me if you would, wherever you're watching from. Dear Jesus, I know that you're God. I'm a sinner. You died for my sins. Please forgive me. I invite you into my life as my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that you've received him into your life, we want to say congratulations here at Influence Living. Here's what you've got to do, though. It's a journey. It's not just one-time prayer and live however you want. Now you just live to please Jesus. Find out who Jesus is. Begin to read in the Christian Bible in the book of Luke. It's a great place to start. Go to a Christian church and say, listen, I made a decision to follow Jesus. Help me grow up in my faith. If they don't help you, find a church that will. And then pray to God on a regular basis. Talk to him all the time. Just, you can think thoughts to God and listen to his gentle whisper. See if he'll whisper things to you or speak to you as you read scripture. He loves you and he told me to tell you that and that he cares about you. Uh, he is so proud of you. Here's one more thing that we would like to encourage you to do as well, and that is to let me know about it. I would just love to be praying for you. Wade at InfluenceLiving.com. That's my address, Wade at InfluenceLiving.com. You see the mailing address right there on your screen. You could send a letter to us. We would love to know of your decision. Go to Messenger in Facebook as well and contact us that way. You can also see other editions of Influence Living by going to Influence Living on YouTube and our page on Facebook. We would love to have you uh, tune in and watch other editions of Influence Living. Uh, one more thing, uh, we've always got uh, great books for you to read right there on the screen. You see an opportunity for you to pick up a book right there on your screen. You can go to Amazon, pick it up. We're just so honored uh, that you're watching today. And this book, I believe, will challenge your heart. Well, that about does it for this edition of Influence Living. One more time, I'm Wade. I've been your host here. Thanks so much for tuning in. One more thing, though, if you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, Kissimmee area, uh, we'd invite you to join us at the church I pastor, Greenway Church. Go to greenwaychurch.com and you'll see that we have two locations, five Sunday services. Usually I preach all the Sunday services. We would love to have you join us sometime. Uh, here at Greenway Church. Well, that does it. God bless you, and I trust that you allow God to continue to influence your life.